Hi, I'm Commissioner Nancy Jester, and welcome to Nancy Jester Reports for Tuesday, September 18th, 2018. Today, we met as a committee of the whole, uh, your Board of Commissioners did meet, and um, we got some updates and went over our agenda that we'll vote on next week. So, first things first, this is an article that's come out today in the Champion, and you'll see this picture right here. Uh, we had a big unveiling of little um, animated uh, caricature pennies uh, that uh, are named different things like Joe Penny and Libby Penny and Chief Penny and Parker Penny for all the different, and I think there was another one, different types of spending that Splost uh, can do. Um, we have not yet actually paved a road, paved a foot of road with Splost dollars. Uh, we've done some public safety vehicle uh, purchases, which I'm very happy about. We need that, but we haven't paved or done anything with your Splost. Uh, so I thought this was kind of a joke, actually, that we would have these um, little characters come out. Uh, uh, I guess that that that's been. That's what we've spent your spouse dollars on, our little uh, Joe pennies. And, um, and they're really cute, but they don't pave your road. Uh, so hopefully we will see some of those procurements um, and listings of paving schedules come out in the next week. Th these are some things we talked about in committee today. So hopefully we'll be getting the show on the road. I think it's, uh, it's late. We should have had our stuff together. Uh, right after the referendum, but the administration took a long time in getting a project manager to us uh, through the procurement process for us to approve. We only just recently did that, so, um, but we've got Joe Penny, so there's that. We also received um, a update from the Board of Health on mosquitoes, and so, you know, please turn over all uh, water, anything that collect water in your um, uh, you know, in your home or around you, wear mosquito repellent. Make sure to protect those, uh, you know, with compromised immune systems, the very old, the very young. We certainly know that there's West Nile virus out there, but we just got a very scary update about Eastern Equine Encephalitis Virus, EEE -E -E, uh, virus, and uh, from the um, Department of Environmental Health at the Board of Health. And this we've never seen north of the fall line before in Georgia, but they have a positive case or they have a positive test in mosquito. This is a very dangerous virus. Um, it uh, has a 33% mortality rate and can cause severe brain damage in people that uh, survive an infection of it. So please protect yourself and please try and create uh, the conditions where you, you know, where you won't see mosquito breeding in your yard. But um, We'll be following up on this, putting out information we get from the Department of Health. You can certainly visit their website. We'll post that here um, on this video. And also their phone number, should you have questions uh, for them. Uh, this is directly to the Division of Environmental Health of the DeKalb Board of Health is 404-508-7900, 404-508-7900. It's very serious. Uh, so we went through your agenda today. Um, it was pretty perfunctory. Most of the work we did today was in committee. Um, most things were deferred to the Committee of Jurisdiction, then we review them there, and we'll come back next week and vote on things. So we had the Finance, Audit, and Budget Committee meeting um, today. I chair that committee. Um, <clears throat> so we did review the uh, monthly financials, so that was good. We are tracking well. Uh, that is, and I, I have to say, this is um, a great thing. We are now doing this. Um, <clears throat> for the second year in a row, uh, because before that we had no financial statements at all in DeKalb County. So I'm very proud of the work we've done uh, as a FAB committee. Um, we are also tracking the Office of the Independent Auditors um, <clears throat> audits and the recommendations and manage, uh, management's responses to them. So first, you know, we had that KPMG audit of uh, water billing done um, last year, and there were lots of recommendations so we are following now and we're coming up to that period of time where management the administration will either have complied and implemented some of these recommendations or not and you know we'll be asking for responses there and we'll let you know what they say they haven't responded yet but we anticipate uh, soon that the uh, independent auditor will let us know what the responses um, have been and whether any of these recommendations have been implemented the biggest one of them and I don't think they're going to implement it is to unify the billing function and the operations. Right now we have these two separate entities, they don't communicate well, and those people that know the industry, that have worked in it, that are now um, professional consultants with KPMG, told us, yeah, that's what you need to do. So I, I'm 
going to be very interesting to see how that goes. We're also tracking every other audit that's been finalized, so that means we have a draft report, management has made comments, and the report has been finalized with the recommendations in it. Then once that happens, we track whether these recommendations have been implemented. So we've got um, several of these at that point from emergency contracting reviews to sole source contracting, um, various, so various procurement uh, issues and so on. And, and this continues to grow. Um, and at, I, I think over the next three to six months, we're going to start to get sort of some telemetry, some data points, if you will, on is the administration taking seriously these audits and what they're doing to um, implement these recommendations with fidelity? Are they implementing them at all? So we can keep you informed, the voters, so um, you know exactly what your government is doing and isn't doing uh, to uh, improve procurement. Um, one thing I will say, um, <coughs> oh, we, oh, we had Public Works Committee uh, meeting too. Uh, and I will, what I'll say here is there are a number of things that, um, you know, we approved and, and moved forward to the full board, uh, but, you know, we've had this um, overall procurement department audit from the Hartwell firm, and I'm, one of the things it says in here is that, you know, there's not really a lot of reliance on the documentation. Um, the the department, the procurement department doesn't seem to um, have a lot of curiosity in how it can identify problems, fix problems. It, it seems very passive. We have um, purchased for millions of dollars a procurement package system that we haven't fully implemented that would help these documentation issues. So there's a lot hanging out there. Um, and one of the biggest things, they say, look, any anything over a million dollars, you should attach an independent auditor's review of the procurement process to make sure you're consistent uh, and you're using best practices. Well, we're not doing that yet. So I've made the decision until we do that, until I can have some reliance on the products and the information that the procurement department is bringing to me, I'm not going to vote on an, any new procurement of a million dollars or greater. I am right now trying to go through if there's a renewal or some change order and anything below that million dollar threshold to the extent I can vet and feel comfortable with the spending, I will vote on it. But anything a million or over, I'm um, at this point in time, not. I just don't feel confident to, uh, to make a vote. So I'm voting no until, until they do that. Um, so, and I realize the administration is telling everybody this is draft form. It is a draft form, but it's done by a very serious group of people with uh, sterling reputations. And, uh, uh, and I think some of these problems are ongoing. These are not just past problems. These are current problems as well. So um, I'm taking this very seriously. And I will also bring to your attention that we are not compliant with the 2015 referendum that you voted on that said you must codify in county ordinance your procurement policy and procedures. So 16, 17, now 18, we have not done that. I get that it takes time. It wasn't going to be something that got done immediately. You want, you, you want that to be a very good ordinance. Uh, and some really uh, fine people have been working on that. But it's just uh, stuck somewhere. And we need to unstick it uh, because that needs to be codified in ordinance. And um, it's the will of the people you voted for in a referendum, and we haven't done it. So that's another reason I'm just not voting on procurements of a million dollars or greater. So look for, uh, for me to talk about that in more detail soon. Uh, but I think, uh, you know, I need to let you know we are not compliant with that law right now. So today was a very busy day, a very informative day. Um, so please join me next time for the next edition of Nancy Jester Reports.